welcome to Silverstone. This is the 2019 Bennett's British Superbike Championship season preview. I'm Michael Mann, this is Chris Newell, and this is the first official UK test here at Silverstone. It's the first time we're seeing the superbikes out on track. Chris, it's been a chilly one. What's going on? Well, I say it's chilly, it's starting to warm up on track now. It was slightly damp this morning, but it's the sun starting or trying to come out. So the riders are heading out on track and yeah, it's just, it's good to be back. It's good to see the new teams, the new levers, the new bikes, all in a, you know, lovely new livery. So yeah. So we've got a load of new guys coming up from, um, from the support classes. We've also got some guys coming in to the Superbike paddock. Uh, and there's some really hot names as well. Yeah, the talent's unreal. and. You, every year you say you can't call your top six or your showdown six and this year's no different. It's, I think it's harder than ever. All right, let's start at the start then. We've got the championship winning team from 2018. Okay, they've lost Leon Haslam, he's gone to World Superbikes, but the Quattro Plant, JG Speedfit, Kawasaki team have got two new riders. They have, yeah, and just as strong as last year, really. We've got uh, Glenn Irwin, obviously he was with uh, BYZ Ducati last year. He was on a V-twin and he's now obviously on the four-cylinder ZX-10R. It's a big step for him, it's a different bike, but in pre-season testing he's showing no difference um, in terms of the times. He's, he's been quick, he's been uh, up on the timesheets, and He's made no qualms about it. He thinks he's the number one rider in that team this year. There's a lot of pressure on his shoulders, probably to you know claim that title and claim his first BSB um, crown. So it'd be really interesting to see how he gets on. And in the other corner, we've got Ben Curry, and he was the super. He finished second in the Super Sport Championship last year. He's a great rider. I've never seen you know a person ride 600 Kawasaki that that hard at some of the places we went last year. And it's just great to see and um, really hope he has a good season because I think he's a real talent and it's nice to see Kawasaki showing some faith in him and, and supporting him up through the ranks. So, so uh, Ben Curry is making quite a big step up then, isn't he, from Super Sport to Superbike. Is it is it going to be a tough call for him? Is he, you know, is he showdown potential? Uh, I'm, I'm not too sure. I think it'll be uh, a learning curve, obviously, the first few rounds. But in testing, I remember catching up with Glenn and Glenn said, you know, he was really impressed with how uh, Ben took to the Superbike. He said he, he's not, you know, necessarily done anything since has gone out, taking his time just to learn a thousand cc machine. He's doing well out in the first couple of sessions. And is now the season for Glenn Irwin to shine? Is it about time that he, you know, he really fulfilled his potential? Because the boy's quick. We know that. Oh yeah, understandably. And I think you know, last year it was you know, when was he going to get that first win? And there was you know a lot of stigma around that, but he's proven he can do it now. And I think it was a bit of a you know just a, a, a sort of a mental block for him to to have it. And now he's got it. I think he's. Um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be unstoppable and it'll be, it'll be good to see how he gets on this year. So Chris, here we are, we're outside the RF regular and reserves Kawasaki team. Now they had Jake Dixon on the bike last year and he pushed all the way um, for the title really. And now he's gone up to Moto2, leaving a space on his bike. But who's filled it? It's Ryan Vickers, uh, Superstock 600 champion from last year and runaway champion really. He absolutely dominated that class and the guys at the RAF Kawasaki have obviously seen something special there, which, which I think they found. And um, yeah, obviously a big step. I mean, it's even a bigger step than stepping up, obviously, from Superstock 1000 or Super Sport. That's a, that's a big jump to make. But so far, Ryan's really taken to it like a duck to water. And he's very young, isn't he? He's only, what, 20 years old? 20 I think. years old, yeah. That's and he looks it too. <laughs> but what a way to start your career. And I mean, he's only started out. He's, only, he's not even been uh, riding uh, sort of... Um, on the on the track for a while. He, I think his background's motocross, so phenomenal couple of years he's had. But um, yeah, to this year it would just be a matter of learning. He obviously knows the tracks really well, but learning how that thousand reacts around these circuits. He's gonna the corners are gonna be coming up for, <laughs> upon him a lot quicker. But I caught up with him uh, over the Christmas period, and he was saying. And I said, are you, you know, intimidated by the thousand at all? Is it going to be a, you know, a big jump? And he said, in theory, it shouldn't be. He said, I've got better brakes. I'm going to have better tires. Going to have better technicians around me. If anything, you know, I should feel more comfortable on the bike more quickly. Chris, surely one of the favourites for the championship, maybe even the top two positions, is the BYZ PBM Ducati team. They've got a hell of a lineup. They got a hell of a lineup and a hell of a bike there. They've got the new Ducati V4R, which is. Well, it's been phenomenal in the World Superbike Series and whether that can uh, come obviously into the BSB Championship with different regulations, different um, electronics, we'll have to wait and see, but boy, they've got some riders. Josh Brooks, obviously last year, he done great stuff on that R, uh, McCam's R1 and he's just he's been a f formidable character in the Championship for many a year now and he's, he's gonna, he knows how to put a Championship together. 
obviously winning it back in 2015 on the on the Yamaha and um, yeah, he'll he'll want to uh, set the record straight this year and go out for the title. Got a, a lot of experience on the circuits uh, and also as a as a professional, he's been at World Superbikes as well. He's got that kind of that 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 temperament and the talent clearly. And yeah, there's no hiding from uh, his teammate on the other side of the pit box, Scott Redding. You know, uh, in MotoGP last year, coming into his paddock with a, a lot of pressure on his shoulders, and he's admitted that. He said, you know, uh, if I don't win this year, there there'll be a lot of um, you know unanswered, unanswered questions and. But in pre-season testing, he was fantastic. He set some quick times. He looks like he's adapted well to the superbike already. And, you know, come the first round, there's a lot of talk of him saying, oh, wait till the circuit, he doesn't know. Well, he knows a couple of the few circuits that we're going to uh, in the early rounds. So, yeah, expect him to be, uh, I'd, I'd expect well, him to be on the podium. You say that, but actually, at Monte Blanco, a circuit he's never been to before. At Portimao, a circuit he's never been to before. And he's top of the time sheets in both of those tests. Exactly, and, and this is it. I spoke to him the other day about, about exactly that, about, going to these circuits he doesn't know will he struggle and he said no he thrives off that he loves going to new circuits that he's not been to before and learning the the circuits and you know there'll be a few this year that he obviously don't know doesn't know but he'll go there and do the odd track day so don't be surprised if you're on a you know a track day this year and you get scott red in blast around the outside or inside of you so and what a character is to bring to the uh, championship bring to the paddock as well that if uh, if anyone <laughs> doesn't follow him on twitter and instagram uh, doesn't to do so because he's just hilarious yeah he's great for the championship and He's got a real rapport with the fans as well. There's a few fans on social media over the winter break that have said, you know, I've not been to BSB before, but I'm coming to the championship this year just to see Scott. So, um, yeah, he'll bring a lot. He'll be a big, big, bring a big following, and I think he's great for the championship. So Brooks and Redding are almost nailed in for the showdown as far as uh, predictions are concerned. Oh, I, I don't know about that. Last year I predicted the top six, and I was miles off. And this year the depth of talent's just un unreal. And um, yeah, I wouldn't want to call it. Uh, next up is FS3 Racing, they're running the Kawasaki ZX-10 uh, as they did last year. They've got Danny Buchan on board once again. He showed some good promise, didn't he, last year? He did, yeah. It was, um, it was a shame not to see him just make that showdown. He was so close. Actually, here at Silverstone, he just missed out. But, you know, what a, what a season he had. I, I don't think he, he'll obviously be disappointed he missed out on the showdown. But what a season to build on for this year. And they've done a lot of development to the bike over the pre-season testing. And he was, he was steady, you know, he, he didn't go out and uh, set the timesheets alight, but they worked for a lot of stuff. They got a, a, a lot more new parts this year. K-Tech have up their um, commitment to the team. And he's, he's just feeling really good with the bike and the team around him. And we obviously, we done, we done a gadget garage tour with him the other day and he just feels so comfortable there. And so expect thing, big things from Danny this year. Again, another great character to have in, the, in and around the paddock. He's, uh, he's always chatty, he's always up for a laugh. And he's, uh, he's, uh, he's a good guy. He's one of the good guys to have here. He is indeed, yeah. And, and obviously next to him we've got Lee Jackson uh, competing in the Superstock 1000 Championship this year. Uh, last year he had a solid season and he would be expecting to take the championship this year. And them two together, they're, yeah, they're a great laugh and they're good, good guys to have around the paddock. And let's just move to the next garage down. We've got Hawk Racing, Suzuki's. So we've got Bradley Ray, winner of several races last year, uh, over our shoulder. Uh, and they've got uh, another new one, another new face for the championship. Yeah, they've got Luke Stapleford this year. Uh, he was in World Supersport last year. Uh, he just, he just, he was so close to showing his, his true potential in that championship. But it's such a tough, um, you know, championship to, to be in. But he's come back and he's adapted really well to the superbike. He was at the weekend um, racing at Mallory Park, and I think he took all three wins. And Brad Cooper, they were all out against, against him. So um, he's showing good promise, and he's, he's a, yeah, he's a feisty character. You, you wouldn't want to come across him on track. Um, Bradley Ray's uh, much fancied for a few wins, I'd imagine, this season. He's very, he's very liked by Suzuki. Hierarchy up in Japan. Uh, he gets to ride in the, um, in the eight-hour race, endurance race over in Japan again, and he's. You know, he's well thought of here, he's a, he's a hell of a talent and I'm sure that he's got some wins in him. Yeah, it'd be an interesting year for Brad, obviously he started off last year phenomenally with them two wins at Donington. Um, and yeah, he, he, he then w didn't push on to, you know, bust through into the showdown and, and take, take the championship really. That's after the first round what we thought it, he would do, but I think he's matured last year and I think this year he's going to go about it a different way and just build them championship points up through the season and undoubtedly I think he'll be in the showdown. Can they both make the showdown? It'd be a big ask for Luke to make the, show, the showdown in his first year, but he, the bike's capable, uh, he's capable, he knows the tracks obviously from a, year, a few years ago. In super, uh, British Supersport, he was phenomenal. You know, he took the title and, and was a real force to be reckoned with. So he knows the circuits, it would just be a matter of adapting to that superbike. But um, from the first few glimpses we've had of him on track, he, he looks like he's, he's doing that. 
Chris, we're outside the McCam's Yamaha garage. Now, the Yamaha R1 is several years old, but they've had a lot of development time over the last few years, and boy, have they got a rider lineup this year. Yeah, they have. They've got Taron McKenzie from last year, who showed you know, great promise here, actually, at Silverstone. He got his first podium, and phenomenal season that he did have. So, um, yeah, he'll be expecting to build on that this year. And Jason O'Halloran alongside him. Yeah, Jason's, uh, I, I think he's a dark horse this season. You know, he had um, a tough year on Honda last year, injuries and, and, and the like. And But this year in pre-season, a lot of people have been, you know, really uh, surprised by his pace. Um, and in uh, Portimao, he went, he went fastest as well. So, yeah, expect good things from Jason this year. I would definitely have these two in my, mind you, my showdown's going to have 12 people in it, I think, at this point. How big is that going to be? And we can't forget, obviously, Matt Trulove as well is on almost like the satellite team for the Cam's Yamaha with Raceways Yamaha. Um, and yeah, he, he's stepping up from Superstock last season. And yeah, great guy. We were talking to him earlier this morning. And he's just going to try and, you know, get up to pace with the Superbike guys and, and just learn his trade this year. So in the WD40 Kawasaki team, we've got uh, another man with some world championship experience. Yeah, we've got Claudio Corti. He was actually in both two a few years ago. He rode for the team in Superstock form, Superstock 1000 form last year. Uh, and yeah, showed some real promise in that class. It's obviously a step up into the Superbike class, but he's, um, yeah, considering some of the guys that are coming in from world championships, he, he knows most of the circuits now. So yeah, he'll expect to hit the ground running this season. And he's on a he's on a ZX, you know he's on a Kawasaki that um, well clearly which is a championship bike from last year but it's you know it's got the ability. Yeah, that's it. Uh, up and down the paddock, there's a, there's obviously different variants of the ZX10R and it's um, different swing arms, different suspension setup. So if you can find a setup that he's happy with and and works well well around some of these tight and twistier circuits, then he should have a good season. All right, and in the very next garage, let's move across. We've got Honda Racing. Again, with uh, with two new faces for this year, um, out of gone Jason O'Halloran and Dan Linford, in have come Xavi Forres and Andrew Irwin. They have, yeah, and it's it's, a, it's yeah, a real real shake up for Honda this year. Obviously, last year it was a testing year with both Dan and Jason getting injured. They were obviously uh, parted ways now, and obviously Andrew and uh, Forres have come in, and it's um, Andrew. I think this year, obviously, he's going to have a lot of competition from his brother, but yeah, he's going to just expect to to learn the bike. Um, and it, it'll be his first full season in BSP, let's not forget that. Yeah, no, it's an important point, and also learning how to set up a bike. And I think that someone like Xavi Forrest will, will help him to do that. That's it, yeah. Um, Forrest obviously was on a Ducati for a few years. Um, he's gone from the V-Twin now to the four-cylinder Honda, and that was, I think, when he first came over and started riding a bike, one of his first worries, whether he'd get to know the bike as well as he has, but he seems to have adapted to it really well. And they've both been running well in pre-season. Um, both at Monte Blanco, Portimao, they've, uh, they've put in some strong performances. Yeah, they have, and Honda, Honda know how to set a bike up. They're, they're, they've been a, a force we reckon with in the championship for many a year, and I think they, they're out to prove a point this year. They want to actually prove the potential of that Fireblade. Um, they know it's there, they've just got to go out on track and prove it. And of course they've got uh, young Tom Neve, uh, who's known to Honda, and he lives around the corner from, the, uh, from headquarters, and he, and he turned out for the super bike team last year on a couple of occasions, and, uh, and they're running him on a on an SB2 in Superstock this That's year. That's right, yeah. At Thruxton last year, he uh, rode the, the full spec Superbike, and the team, um, being a local lad, and they've spot, spotted something in him, and he's running in the Superspot 1000 class this year. It'll be, uh, it'll be a tough challenge, because it's, um, you know, that championship's dominated by the, by the BMWs and Suzuki's and Kawasaki's. They've, they've been tried and tested there for a few years, and it's not um, been since Jason O'Halloran run the Honda in Superstock 1000 a few years back that a, a full factory Honda like this one's going in there um, to challenge for the title. So it'd be interesting to see how he gets on. Right, we're with the Yamahas of the tag racing team. And they've got uh, a new face with uh, Dan Linford this year, straight over from Honda. How do you think he's going to fare? I think he'll do great. I think it's um, obviously last year was just a season to forget for Dan after many injuries. He was just, um, I think, pleased at the end of the season. So, fresh start this year with uh, Tag Racing. They've got a new title sponsor on board this year, Santander Salt. So, they, they, they mean business. And I think he will enjoy uh, sort of the family environment that Tag Racing offer. Look, Dan's got the pace, he's got the, the, the track knowledge as well. Uh, it's, it's either, look, we've seen well, we've seen these guys perform certainly with um, Josh Brooks at the at the helm a couple of seasons ago. So you know, there's there's no question about their bike's ability. That's it. Yeah, exactly. And they've they've 
improved the bike a lot over the uh, pre-season. They've got Olin's on board, or Dan's running Olin's this year, and um, yeah, it should be good to see. And, and Sean in the other side of the garage, he was he had some steady results last year, and he, he improved throughout the season. And yeah, really impressed me towards the, the end of the season as to in terms of his times and his positions. And um, yeah, he'll, ex he'll be expecting to build on uh, build on last year uh, again. We had James Allison on the on the tag bike last year, and he's and he's moved to Smith's Motor uh, Racing alongside Peter Hickman and they're of course running the BMWs. Now both that team and the uh, Tyco, the main BMW team, have not got their bikes ready in time for this test uh, and it doesn't look like they're going to get their, their bikes ready for the first or the, the season opener back here at Silverstone but we've just got to talk about those guys really. So uh, Christian Iden, um and Keith Farmer on the Tyco bikes. It, it, it's like throwing something up in the air and not being able to catch it at the moment. We just don't know how they're going to fare on these new machines. Yeah, that's it. I mean, uh, obviously Keith Farmer last year, he won the Supersport Championship uh, two years ago, Superstock 1000 Championship last year. So the talent's unquestionable, the talent's there. Uh, and I think it's the best time for him to step up into the Superbike class. Obviously, uh, last, last time he did attempt the Superbike class, he, he said he just wasn't mentally ready. He said, he said he's a different person now, a different rider. And, and I think stepping up this year, obviously with a bike, uh, not necessarily uh, at its full development yet, I think it's a great opportunity for him to make that step into the team, into the Superbike team. And from the conversations we've had with him, he said that the bike actually feels like a like a 600. Um, and obviously we know how well he goes on one of them, so it could be a, yeah, a good stepping stone for him. I guess it all depends on how they, they transform that road bike into a, into a Superbike. It's, uh, it makes such a difference when you're taking, taking well, what is essentially a road bike and, and, and creating a Superbike out of it. But I, I've been lucky enough to ride that, the, the road going bike already, both in the wet and the dry, and it is an absolute sensation. The way it turns, uh, the way the electronics work, and I know it's, they've got had to go run Motec here, but if they can get that thing hooked up, it might just be a season of development for them, I think, this year. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Obviously, the likes of Ellison, Id and uh, Hickman, Farmer, they're, they're all going to be out on the, the bikes at some point. I don't know if they will share information they might do, but they'll be in their interest to get the bike up to speed as quick as possible. But like you say, from the initial um, thoughts on just the, the bog standard bike, it's some machine. Well, this is a beautiful thing over our shoulder now, Chris. We've got the uh, Oxford Products Motor Rapido Ducati. They've got the V4R. And they've got, and they've retained Tommy Bridewell for this year, who was uh, showing some excellent promise last year. That's it, yeah. Um, it was just a shame Tommy wasn't with the team at the beginning of the season. He would have been co contesting for easily the showdown and maybe even the championship. And this year, he's got a great bike. He's got that V4R. And he's, he's quietly confident. I think he... Um, he knows he's got the bike underneath him, the team around him to do a, a great job this season and fingers crossed he goes well. You can't knock that boy's confidence, can you? He exhumes it and uh, he, he's certainly uh, happy with his own ability, let's say. That's it and, and, he, sh and he should be. You know, he's, he's been in this championship a long time and he's had some, some good rides and good teams uh, around him. So he's, he's got a depth of knowledge, great tr uh, track knowledge, bike knowledge. He, he just... Um, He'll know how to set up that bike and the team around him will obviously help him develop the bike throughout the season. But the initial uh, V4R, like we were saying earlier, in uh, World Superbike spec and stuff, it's doing great. It's doing well, phenomenal. So let's just hope he can even do a, a little bit of that in the BSB Championship. And it's not the only new V4R in the uh, in the paddock either. There's a new team for uh, Mr. Sylvain Barrier. That's right, yes. I don't think he showed his true potential last year. Um, tough season for him, obviously learning the tracks. When you come to a circuit for the race weekend, isn't the easiest thing to do. In fact, it's almost impossible to do that in the Superbike uh, series. And a quick word on Bridewell. Can you do the showdown? Uh, you're putting me on the spot now, but I think he can. I think he can. Obviously, them top six places are going to be the most contested, I think, we've had in any BSB season. But Tommy, last year, won the Riders' Championship, uh, finishing seventh. So, statistically, with Leo moving on and him moving up one, yeah, let's, let's hope he gets there. Chris, I think one thing is for sure, it's going to be a hell of a season once again, as it always tends to be in BSB uh, recently. There's a lot of people who can win. There's a lot of people who can stand on the podium. There's also a lot of people that could make the showdown. So, who's your top six? My top six, I am going to go for off the cuff, no order. Put your hands in and pull out some names. I'm going to go Josh Brooks, Scott Redding, um, Glenn Irwin, Brad Ray, Jason Halloran, and... 
Tommy Bridewell. Ooh. Oh, controversial. What about yeah. you? Come on, you put me on the spot there. What about you? What about me? Oh, okay. Well, I go, yeah, two Ducatis, so <coughs> Reading and Brooks. I go two Yamahas, so Mackenzie and O'Halloran. I go Bridewell. I'm going to go Xavi Forres. Oh. Controversial. There's my six. <laughs> you do realise none of them are going Probably to be none anywhere of them. close <laughs> with our top six for next. Fivers on it. Fivers. Go on in. We'll go for that. Okay. Nice one. All right. The 2019 Venice British Superbike season looks like it's going to be an absolute cracker. Let's hope you enjoy it as well as we do.